Hi, I'm Brandon Maxwell, and we're gonna go over three of my very favorite custom looks over the years. This is Gaga's Met Gala look from 2019. So the theme was camp, and I thought of all the people going that night that she has naturally embodied that theme since day one of her career, so how would you have one look? And I felt if anybody could change in front of all of those people, it would be her. There were three pattern makers that worked on this look, so a one pattern maker per look. There were definitely five seamstresses, but I think it was more like 10. I think probably the handwork was about 700 hours over a period of a couple weeks or a week. This was a fuchsia silk file, and I think it was 24 yards, maybe? 28 yards, it was 28 yards. We made one muslin of this in the office that was actually in red, and so we made one of these that was a little bit shorter, it was probably to like right here, and we had different women come in the office who were the same height and body type as Gaga, and they basically walked around the office for a week and like stood on chairs, and we blew it in the wind, and I chose this fabric one because it is very durable, and it doesn't wrinkle as much. We've walked down many, many blocks in the New York streets with hundreds of people around. So anything could have occurred. You know, the outfits could have shifted underneath. So the whole time I'm walking 10 blocks, I'm thinking like, please let all of the bustiers underneath this outfit be lined up the entire time that we're walking. But look at me, just smiling. I'm available for your movies because I am an actress. I tied this bow by hand in the principal's office before, standing on a chair. And Sarah did these gorgeous metallic lashes and Freddie did this great blonde bob that had all these tiny little hair bows in it. This jacket has snaps inside here. And then all of these bows I tied by hand. I am an expert bow tire. Okay, here's the first reveal. My upper lip is sweating because this is stressing me out going back and looking. Anyways, as you can see, here are the snaps I told you about. And it was a zipper. This was the first reveal. So underneath this was a pink bustier. So this was the first time that I had a sigh of relief because there was no pink showing. And so I think most people thought that this was it. We were just taking off the coat and then she was gonna move in. And this was kind of the point where I could see confusion in everyone's face. Like this guy's right here. He's like, what's, like, what's happening? Is this it? Is this the final? And then that was the feeling on the carpet. Everyone was like, oh, black dress, okay. We're moving on. She's wearing a Tiffany necklace. And look, all the baby hair bows. This Tiffany necklace was super expensive and I was very worried to accidentally rip it off. Ah, here's the reveal. See, look at the crowd back here. They're like, yes. So this dress was crepe. It was like a black stretch crepe. And on the hip was a black gazar. And the black gazar was a risk because black couture, like gazar does wrinkle a lot. That's like one of the biggest characteristics of gazar. Is characteristics the right word? I don't know. This was a big hip that was built in and made from shoulder pads on the side that had many, many layers of tool and gazar on it. And what you don't see between this and the picture before it is that there was a waistband that was Velcro that had the same exact hip on the other side under the pink jacket. So it helped to fill out the pink jacket. And what we had to do in that moment as we were removing the jacket is that I had to very quickly rip that belt off and hide it under the pink when it moved away so that nobody saw that there was another equal hip side on the other side. We had to think about tailoring everything in a way that would fit the outfit underneath it. Okay, here we are to the pink dress. I mean, this guy for sure is loving it. He is thrilled to be there. See, this was the third one and he was like, we're in for a ride. Under here is a bra and panty that has crystals on it. 7,000 or 8,000 that were all placed by hand by everyone in my office. We were full of glue in there. Anyways, this dress, the first time I ever tried it on in the woman in my office before Gaga, you could see up here every tiny little crystal coming through and it looked like textured and weird, and then everything you can see underneath here from the waist up is lined with neoprene, which is like a swimsuit material, so that you can't see any bumps. And Gaga, of course, is wearing her custom 12-inch shoes, which she walks in these shoes better than she walks in sneakers. On the back of this gorgeous Tiffany necklace is a butterfly, and in the rehearsal, the only job I had this entire night besides taking off the clothes, was to say butterfly, to remind someone to turn the necklace around. And the whole way to the Met Gala for 10 blocks, in my mind, I just kept saying butterfly, 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 butterfly. 
And I forgot in the moment. Of course, I forgot. And literally all of these people, these amazing dancers who I've worked with for years, the whole time they're dancing and doing their umbrellas and then under their mouth, they're just going, butterfly, butterfly. And I, it never registered with me. I'm like in my mind, I'm just thinking, isn't this an amazing, magical moment? I'm just like living fully in it. And then finally Gaga looked at me and she said, butterfly? And I was like, right, butterfly. I had turned it around and look how happy they were that I remembered butterfly. The butterfly was turned around, not my bee, by the professional who has performed in front of people forever. All right, so this is the bra, the panty. The bra was totally crystallized. So were the panties and so were the shoes. This was a project. It was such a great moment because everybody on my team worked super, super hard, hand placed those crystals and like what this moment means for them and to have been a part of it. And it's such a special thing. I don't think I could have done this moment with anybody else in the world but her. Okay. So this was a custom look for the Obama State Dinner for Singapore. This was 2016, I launched my brand in 2015. So this is a year into my business for like the ultimate American moment. Am I gonna start crying on glamour right now? <laughs> I'm gonna have my coffee. So this is a silk crepe, an ivory silk crepe. This was 14 yards of fabric. We built a body form that matched Mrs. Obama's and we made it on her. It was constructed by hand. Nothing was put under a machine. There are intricacies that are involved with a white dress, which is that you have to wear gloves and you can't put it on the floor. And like, and then when you send it, it has to be wrapped and things can get dirty very easily. And then this type of crepe that we used on this is a very, very nice crepe, but also it absorbs liquids very, quickly. The top, the bustier here, is lined with neoprene to hold the structure. Now I'm giving away all my secrets. Everything has neoprene in it. So there was also from the back a removable train. So this was a column dress from the front, as you can see here. And then this whole train was removable. You know, I think that sometimes the intricacies of the design can get lost once it's taken apart and put on a machine. For this one, I was really particular about these two layers coming off the body in 3D. I just didn't think that it was something that we could take off and put into the machine. I think it had to be basted by hand first and then hand sewn. I just, you know, and it's the first lady of the United States. You want to give her the hand quality. We worked after hours on this dress. We did not work on this dress while people were in the office. And obviously we did not want anyone to know who the dress was for because we wanted to respect the privacy of the first lady. So we had it locked away in my office during the day when people were working. And then we worked late at night after six o'clock ourselves on this once everybody left for the day. So only two people knew about this dress. So when this was happening, I was in Austria. I was in the hotel room by myself and it was happening at like six o'clock in DC, which is like midnight in Austria, I think. So they got C-SPAN. First time I ever watched C-SPAN in my life. And so the thing is, is that you can go on the White House website and it shows the schedule of the First Lady and the President every day so, and they're always on time. So I knew that she would walk out at 6.02. So I'm like, 6.01, I'm counting down 60 seconds. I'm like, maybe, and then the door opens and maybe I will cry. And she walks out in this dress and it was a moment that changed my life. I was like, this is, I'm, this is the American dream. And then President Obama Can you imagine watching that live on television that the president then puts his thumbs up? I know it wasn't for me, obviously, it was for his beautiful wife, but in my mind it was for me. I was screaming so loudly in that hotel room. I took my shirt off, I was like sweating. I had to walk around town by myself and breathe. I was like looking at every person like, what did you do today? I just dressed the first lady. To anybody who would listen, nobody spoke the same language. Anyways, I'm in another country. I'm watching our first lady walk out, wearing a dress of mine. In the time of that administration, I had built an American business and like my American dream had come true and it is just still the greatest moment for me. So now this is Carly Kloss to the 2016 Met Gala. This was the first time I had ever made a look for the Met Gala. The first time I met Carly, I was a stylist assistant. I was working on a Christian Dior advertising campaign shot by Steven Mizell. She was 15 years old, I think, or 16 years old. When she walked in the door, I was like that. 
has to be the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. And she was so full of life and she had cookies in her hand, of course. Full circle moment, Carly and I are on a TV show together now, but we've been very good friends throughout the years. But the great thing about this is because Carly has been a model for so many years and she's worked with so many designers, she is very, very good at standing in a room. And sometimes when you're making something on someone, they have to stand for hours. And she stood there like this the entire time for hours. And I think I made in the end three of the exact same of everything because she was wearing white again. And I knew that the Met Gala is a party. So people are going to be drinking and that someone might spill something. And if something, if something gets on her, she needed to have a backup. So this was a white Gazar cape. It was actually more ivory in person. I still love this little baby bow. So what I wanted to do is I wanted her to change many times, which now that I'm thinking about it, I guess is a thing that I do at the Met. Um, maybe that's my thing. <laughs> which is funny now because on the TV show, I guess I'm known for saying reveal over, which I never really realized, but I guess it's become like a theme in my work. So I wanted to make this very sweet, clean, covered look. This is all hand cut here, so you can, it's all on the bias. So you can see that it's very floaty. This was many, many layers. I don't know how many yards was in this. This must have been close to 20 yards. It looks very simple, but it was when she walked, it was every one of these layers was cut out and folded under the other. So it created quite like a sweep when she walked. Anyways, back to the bow. I was obsessed with this bow. I'm still obsessed with this bow. Like I think about this bow all the time. And here is her reveal. Once again, this dress was lined with neoprene. This was all hand cut on Carly's body. So this started as a full shell and quite literally like I took, the scissors were this long and she stood there with her arms out and every single line was cut on her. This fabric has a little bit of a stretch and a great weight and super bouncy and it really moves really, really well. Let's take in the back. Wow. She's killing it. She called me on her way home from the Met Gala and she was like, something got spilled on my the bottom of my skirt. And I said, no problem. And she said, let's just put the other one on, the double of it, and I'll wear it out. And I was like, let me just cut this one on you so you can have the full dress clean and in your closet forever. I can't remember if it was above the knee. I think it was above the knee, but in her hotel room, I just hunched down on the floor and I cut the dress. I think it was a little shorter. It's like here, cut it on her. We threw a jacket on. It was like just super whatever, great collar, easy, easy shorts. She had great heels on. Boom, she went out. That was it. This type of fab fabric also doesn't really fray so much. Like this is pretty tightly woven. So if you cut it clean, there's really not a need to hem it, of course, like for it to be nice if you're going out. Like the bottom of this dress, you can see it's very nicely hemmed in real life. It took probably a day and a half to him that. But, you know, when you're going downtown for a party, I think it's fun, why not cut the dress? No one at the after party of the Met is being like, is the dress hemmed at the bottom? Everyone's like, that moment has already passed. I think that fashion should be fun, and I think that people should enjoy their moment. And, you know, why not? She's going to a party downtown, why not cut it off? Like, I'm not trying to make art, I'm trying to make women feel good. And I tell anyone that I'm making a custom look for, don't think about what I would like, you know, it's your moment. Glamour, it was glamorous, thank you.